Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Northgard. I like to peek in on this every once in a while. It's still in early access, but it's developing, they're releasing cool stuff for it all the time. And a new clan came out recently, and I think we're gonna try it out. So if this is your first time seeing Northgard, if you've never if you don't have any idea how this works, uh, don't worry. I will be explaining the basics of it as we go on. Here's my map gen settings, it's all pretty standard. And today we're gonna be trying out the new clan. Slidrugtani, maybe? Slidrugtani, the clan of the boar. Uh, so, we have menders instead of healers, and they give lore while not healing. We get max population from additional territory, and we don't take penalties for not upgrading our houses. This actually seems really powerful. It seems like you maybe don't have to build very many houses as long as you can keep your food up. And then our fame bonuses are at 200 fame, we get a free tech, and at 500 fame... All of our blessings increase in value. That's pretty cool. So this is a very, like, lore-focused faction. Now, I think that I may have won lore victories in both of the other Northgard videos that I did, so uh, sorry if we end up going that way again. We'll see what the map yields. Uh, but like I said, I think this is a pretty cool game. We're gonna, real quick, just get my starting buildings out. So the core idea of this game... Uh, yeah, we'll start building our woodcutter right away, too. The core idea of this game is that you have all these citizens, right? And it's kind of a real-time strategy thing. Um, you have different kinds of units, but you don't build new units. You turn your existing villagers into things. So we built this scouting hut. Villagers who go to the scouting hut become scouts, and they can figure out, uh, they can find new territory for you. So we did that with two other villagers. I've been testing a lot of, like, just trying a lot of different things out, and I think I like this two scout opening, getting, uh, getting a lot of territory figured out really quickly so that you know what you need to expand into. This is a strong expansion. So the game is played on these, like, large tiles, right? Like, we started on this tile here. It has a coast and some stuff. Oh, I should probably be getting wood. Let's sign a villager here. They become a woodcutter. Um, and so you can see this tile that we've explored now has a forest, which gives us a bonus to wood production, and a stone deposit. Get us some good stone that we can use to uh, do important things. I'm gonna pull one of our villagers uh, one of our scouts back, now that we can see the surrounding territory. Have them turn back into a villager. Villagers gather food. Uh, but you can see there's also uh, hostiles. There's some wolves around. Do we see anything else? There's another wolf on this tile somewhere. I can't exactly see where. There's a little readout down here. That, uh, ah, he's like way off at the edge. A little readout down here that tells you all the things that are in the tile. So we're just going to generate some food and wood for the moment. Uh, I'm going to expand out to this tile as soon as we have 20 food. So your citizens need food to live, and you'll also expend some amount of wood uh, during the winter as firewood, and you have to pay upkeep on your buildings. And then once you uh, once you get enough food, you can use it to reach out to new areas. Once you get, you know, you spend wood to build new buildings, and you can spend gold to buy a variety of things. Uh, but, like I said, there's not a lot of okay, Hunter's Lodge, because there are deer on this tile. There's not a lot of ways to get, you really only get citizens from the town hall. Just everyone, every so often, villagers will show up. It's based on your happiness. The happier your people are, the more, uh, the more frequently new people show up. I'm actually going to... We have a runestone here, which will allow us to generate lore. Lore is our science tech, or our science resource, basically. We need to learn some cool upgrades. I wonder if I should pull somebody to devote to lore. I kind of think I'm, I'm going to hold off. We'll, we'll fill this runes down in a minute, but I want to get our food in a decent place. I want to expand a little bit more. Alright, so we'll assign some villagers to this hunting hunter's lodge. Uh, hunters track... Uh, hunters hunt deer, you know. And uh, they produce a little bit more food than normal villagers do. And also, normal villagers who are just, like, gathering from the trees and stuff uh, will see their food production go down very sharply during the winter, while hunters really won't. I think hunters see no reduction during the winter. Alright, so I can see there's water over here. Where's my scout? What's he doing? I'm gonna let him finish this tile, and then we're gonna pull him over here and explore around the water, because this is a lake, and there'll be fish in it. And I definitely want to get a hold of those. So we're past 40 food. We could colonize a new region, but we can't colonize a region that's defended by enemies. I'm gonna reassign a villager here. 
So the thing that generates our, or the thing that caps our population generation is happiness, first of all, because we'll stop producing new villagers if we get too unhappy. Um, and more villagers will require more happiness. Oh, wolves. And then we also have an actual population cap. And normally we build houses. I built a house right at the beginning of the game to push the population cap up. Yeah, the control. Um, but we're gonna have to build more houses over the course of the game, or at least with most factions you do. I wonder, these guys having free bonus pop cap from exploring territory might make that unnecessary. So, periodically, tiles that have wolves on them will spawn wolves to come and attack us, and also we can't expand into a territory that has wolves on it, like I said. So... Okay, he's exploring. Uh, he is currently exploring one of the tiles that's touching that lake. We'll figure out where the fish are. So we're gonna have to get rid of these wolves. And the way we do that is with military buildings. We're building a training camp here that'll let us turn villagers into soldiers, if we want. It's really important to manage your population well in this game, and uh, it's really, like, it's devastating when people die because the only way for you to replace them is to wait for more villagers to pop out. Um, so you have to be pretty careful. Construction of the training camp is complete. We'll pay a little bit of money to equip a couple of villagers, and we're just going to go on a, uh, on a rampage here. So you can see there's wolves at the edge of this tile. I really like the way they make the edges of new tiles visible so you can sometimes see a little bit what's on them. Alright, two villagers is, uh, two warriors is more than a match for a wolf. Two, uh, two warriors can take down, like, three wolves usually. Three wolves simultaneously. If you get them one by one, it's, uh, quite a bit better even. So I'm gonna just clear out a bunch of tiles. Here, let's, uh, let's go clear this one out too. This one has some fertile land that could be farmed. It would be really cool for us to be able to get that. Ooh, through the uh, through the uh, mist here, through the murk, I can see some Draugr, some like zombies. Those are much more dangerous. So we pull this guy back with the wolf refocus. Okay, we could maybe do one or two more wolves. I don't want to go onto this tile; it's a little too dangerous. Oh, a wolf den. But it's a wolf den that doesn't have a lot of wolves on it right now. Okay. So this tile will this tile will spawn lots of wolves constantly until it's claimed. These other tiles, once we clear them out, they stop producing wolves. Alright, so let the healthy guy tank. And we're gonna grab this tile. And then I think Oh, we don't quite have the food to pick this up yet, do we? Shoot. Well we'll stay right here. Yeah, it's going to be 80. Okay, I need to refocus. So let's take a woodsman. We actually have quite a bit of wood. And I'm not building as quickly or playing as efficiently as I would normally because I'm talking and it's distracting. Ah, uh, you know what. We found a little ruin here. We'll come and explore this. Okay, and then we're going to... Uh, we're going to claim this as soon as we have the food. And it'll clear the wolf den off the tile. And then also, this is the tile that has the fish. You can see the fish swimming around in the lake. All right, we'll stay here until we know there's no more wolves. Okay, cool. And we've gained 30 fame and 5 stone from clearing out that wolf den. So that's pretty cool. Stone is really valuable. Um, do I have a deposit? I don't currently. There's one in this square, so we could get... Or th this tile. So we could go get one. And now that we've pulled some people back, I can reassign to, uh, to wood. And we have a lot of wood. We should build some stuff. But first, let's take a look at our lores. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a way to pause and still be able to look at stuff, so we're just going to have to suffer. Um, so you can see, anything with our little clan logo by it is a unique tech that's only available to us. I don't know if everybody has seven, but every clan has several, so every clan's tech tree is slightly different than everybody else's. Uh, plus three crown production enables trading routes with neutral factions. Buildings are 50% cheaper. That's pretty cool. Plus crowns for each clan member. Tiles with forest, swamp, and fish give plus happiness. Okay, I want to go down this line, because I think this is really great. We have tiles with forest and fish available to us already, and happiness is a real problem. So we have our scout working out what the deal is with this ruin. Uh, let's build some stuff. We're going to build some things. So first of all, I am going to pull a villager to come and uh, 
come and work this out. And then I think we should get a Mender's Hut. We have some wounded clan members, and I'd like to fix that. Oh, winter hit. Okay. Are we alright? Yeah, so you can see our rate of income went way down, or basically it's, it's our consumption went way up. Uh, your people need more food during the winter, and your buildings need more firewood. So, we're doing alright, actually. How close are we to another villager? Pretty close. When they come out, they'll be gathering... I think villagers get two food each during the winter. We're getting plus 11 from five villagers, so it looks like it's two and a fraction. I wish they would display the decibels. But, so we should be okay. I don't think we should lose anything, really. We got a bunch of uh, money and fame from exploring this. Ooh, a circle of stones. And, a, and an iron deposit. All right, we gotta clear this out as soon as we're able to do so. Well, the other thing we have to do is explore the, uh, the stuff adjacent to our tiles. Because like I said, tiles that have enemies on them, right, will, uh, will spawn new enemies to come and attack you sometimes. So we got a bunch of lore and money from the ruin, and that's why we got our second lore so quickly. So now that we have a mender, what our mender is doing is slowly healing our injured clan uh, members one by one. Where are we taking it? Oh, okay. Uh, they're going to need a little help. We're going to have to run. So we know there are wolves in this tile. We're going to have to deal with that. This fisherman's hut because uh, fishermen, much like hunters, don't see any reduction in their food gathering capability during the winter. We'll turn one of these menders into a fisherman as soon as the building's completed, but... Villagers can only gather food on tiles where there are food buildings or tiles where there are houses. So leaving that person as a villager on this tile for the moment would have meant they're just sitting here doing nothing. And some other clans scouted out the map special victory condition. Every map has one of these, uh, as long as you leave it turned on. There's a bunch of different ones, actually. Um, it's random which one you get. Okay, so let's get you guys fishing. And I think that should actually fix our food. Yeah, we're good. Oh, nice. Another hunting space, and it has more uh, silver. It also has another player's border adjacent to it, so that makes me a little nervous. We'll take this. We'll cap their growth, and they'll maybe be very mad about that. These hostile animal attacks seem much more common during the winter. But, uh, two villagers can take a wolf down, usually. Or two, you know, two people of non-warrior professions can take a wolf down usually. Uh, sometimes... Uh, no, two is usually good enough. I was, I was gonna say, sometimes one is good enough because some, like, hunters have a ranged attack. You can usually, uh, you can sometimes get away with some stuff. Alright, so I want this tile pretty badly because this uh, Circle of Stones will give us a place to put two more lore masters and also uh, it improves lore master production in this area. Rats have been reported. We need to store food in silos. So when this uh, when this thing reaches our this is our timer basically this is current you can see winter approaching over here when this reaches the timer we'll lose a bunch of food to the rats okay we're having a bunch of problems and I'm talking uh, too much to fix them so hold on let's focus real quick here let's do some building now that the winter's over we can assign some people off to do other less useful uh, other less in resource intense things so like we probably don't need two people on wood right now. And I do need a bunch of buildings. We're going to have to fix our happiness problem. So we'll make a brewery, because that's what happiness is, right? All right? We got our mender mending. And we're actually getting a little close on food, but I think I'm going to pull a villager, a healthy villager, and one of our woodcutters to be warriors. And let's clear out some more tiles. Send this guy to our newly created mine, and they can uh, get us some stone. So I think it's more important for us to take over this tile because, like I said, I want to cap this clan's growth. I don't want them to grow out between me and the, the map special victory condition because that could make it, first of all, hard for me to interfere with them getting that, and secondly, hard for me to get that. Ah, uh, that sucks. A wolf spawning right at that moment. 
So now one of our warriors is going to be injured going into the thing. Well, we can uh, we can chill right here. Uh, military units get priority from the healer, so we can just let that happen for a second. Uh, do I want plus money for each clan member? I actually think we're fine on money. Let's get this. So lore masters produce more lore, and also it's cheaper for us to build carved stones, which will allow us to assign more lore masters. And we're gonna put you in here. That'll raise our happiness enough that we're now getting population growth again. All right, and our warriors are pretty much full. This will be good enough. So we'll pull this warrior out when it looks dangerous. Let the wolf re, uh, retarget. And then I think we had to leave these people here. I wasn't really thinking about it, but we're going to need uh, a whole bunch of food to, <laughs> to actually take this tile over. So let's reassign some people to food jobs. Unfortunately, you have to move them to a house to turn them back into villagers. And the fact that we haven't really had to build a lot of houses is actually um, meaning that it's a long run for people to change jobs. So we're producing another villager. That's coming pretty slowly. It's actually going to be a really long time before we're at 120. Where's my scout? I'm going to pull the scout back. We don't really need more territory scouted at this moment. We have uh, we have more stuff visible to us than we could possibly use already. Wait, hey, there's another lake over here. Uh, the fish aren't on this tile, though. They're on this one. Oh, we can see another border. So the island is not particularly huge. You will run into conflicts with other players fairly quickly. I'm worried that if I move my warriors off of this tile, um, yellow will take it. So we're just going to sit here and wait until we have enough food, which is not my favorite plan ever. But it is the position I put myself in by not paying enough attention. If I have one criticism of this game, it is uh, it is this, that sometimes you get into a position where you just kind of have to wait. Oh, we can upgrade our town hall. So upgrading buildings costs, generally, stone and uh, money and wood. And upgrading buildings generally lets you assign more people to them and increases the rate of output of the people assigned to them. Uh, the town hall's a little bit different. Upgrading your town hall increases the rate at which new villagers spawn, and it also gives you a little bit of extra population cap. Okay, here we go. 120. And then we need to get back on uh, wood. So the other clan may want to invade and take our new territory away from us. We're going to have to uh, discourage that. This is maybe the next territory we should get, because I'm thinking we're probably going to need more woodcutters. And uh, this tile has a bonus to wood production. So the first thing I want to build on this tile is a defense tower. That'll help. That'll make it costly enough for the other clan to take our stuff from us. Oh, I wasn't... Well, we're going to lose some food to the silos here. We'll also get uh, some disease from the rats, which is based on, I think, the idea that rats spread plague, which, by the way, uh, if you are not aware of this, is not actually how the Black Plague spread. It wasn't even uh, ticks on rats, I believe. It was um, it was other types of rodents. So, yep, the wolf tile is spawning wolves at us. Let's get somebody over here to build this. We have two villagers in this tile, so I, or two citizens in this tile, so I think we should be fine. Yeah, we're going to need to, um, okay, two of us are sick, we lost 44 food, it's not the end of the world. I'm going to assign another person to the Mender's Hut. Actually, our builder is, our builder is dying rapidly from the sickness, that's not good. Uh, this, no, this one, this one, focus on this guy. Nope, didn't work. Okay, well, having people die really sucks, and that's the con part of the consequence of having a bunch of low-health people run around, is that if you get a disease or something, it can lead to a death, and a death, like I said, is just really, it's really harsh in this game. Alright, let's generate some more happiness. 
Because the happier our clan is, the quicker we'll attract new people. And we've got our menders working as fast as they can. So now we have access to silver. Silver is used for a couple of things, but the most important thing to think about uh, in terms of silver right now is down here at the training camp, we can buy a very powerful combat unit called a War Chief with five silver. Uh, we also need quite a bit of money to do that, and we don't really have a lot of sources of money, but we can fix that. We kind of need food and wood right now, though. I, I'm a little loath to reassign people from other stuff. Would you please get this done? You're killing me over here. And as soon as that's done, this guy can start working on a hunter's lodge. And this way we have we have dudes with bows in this tile, and we have our defense tower, which will shoot at enemies that come in. It's not impossible for yellow to take this tile away from us, but now with the defense tile here, it's going to be costly enough um, that they'll have to really devote a significant number of forces to it. Uh, we're going to need that war chief, though. I'll feel a lot safer once we have our war chief. I guess this should be a priority. Let's grab another villager. Pull up over here. So have two hunters. This will give us a little bit better food stability. You can see this next winter is coming on fast. I'm not sure that we're really ready for it, actually. The good news is um, that unit combat units are less effective during the winter, so it's even less likely that they'll come after us, that yellow will come after us during the winter. But we might want to re-scout, um, make another scout, and have them scout Yellow's territory a little bit so that we make formal contact. Because once we've done that, we can um, we can trade with them and try to generate some positive uh, unit organized feasts. So we pay a bunch of food, and it gives plus two bonus to all production and happiness for a little while. It also gives us some fame. We're pretty close to our first fame bonus, which is... Uh, Oh, right, we get a free tech. That's not a bad one. So you can see we have bonus production. So we're at a slight food deficit, but the feast will offset that for a moment. Here we take Osmosis. We gain a bunch of... Uh, oh, yeah, and learning tech gives you uh, fame. So we get a free fame. We also have had tremors. So there's going to be a big earthquake when we hit here. Uh-oh. Okay, this isn't a big deal. We now have three people in this tile. Yeah, we'll be all right. I'm going to have the healers prioritize healing this guy, though, because there might be another wolf attack. Um, so yeah, when this thing hits the current time indicator, we're going to have to spend some wood to repair some buildings that are damaged by the earthquake. And we got a free tech. We could pick up some defensive stuff we have here. The Altar of Kings production is doubled. M Menders give plus 5% produ percent production. Wow, I wish I'd noticed this. You know what? Our Menders hut is not in a good place. Whatever, we'll, uh, we'll start down this line. So, more wood from woodcutters. And then as soon as winter ends, we gotta solve this problem. You know what I want to do? I want to... build a mine here. So I'm gonna have our miner... This seems kind of dumb, but I don't want to disrupt our food production too much. So let's have our miner run back to become a food producer while we have somebody else run over here to build this mine, and then when they're done, they'll become a food producer. If I just had our miner keep working while we build the new mine, our food would be a little bit negative, and I'm not super down with that. Oh, did we... We have no wounded or sick. Okay. So for now, these guys are focused on lore production. I think we're going to be okay. I know we're slightly negative on wood, but I don't think we'll run out. And nothing bad happens, really, unless you run out. Uh, and then winter will end, and it'll go back to being positive. But as you can see, as you keep expanding, you need more and more firewood during the winter. So we're definitely going to need to establish a second woodcutter's camp. And like I said, I want it to be here where the wood bonus is. Ah, angry wolves. The good news is he's going to the place where the defense tower is. That'll be a real short invasion. 
All right, so we'll start accumulating silver. We're gonna need another source of money. I want to get this. I want to get the war chief. And once we have a war chief, not only are our lands more secure from a defensive position, but it's way easier for our war chief to run around and massacre like wolves and stuff than it is for you to build, pay money to make people temporarily into warriors and then you know. All right. So winter ends. We've survived to the new year. We need to stockpile some wood. And actually, we have a ton of stones. We should upgrade some buildings, but I don't want to spend any wood right now. Actually, I don't want to spend any money right now either. Honestly, our rate of wood income is so fast. I'm gonna... I'm gonna build a dock. I think we should be okay. I think we're gonna make enough wood to patch up the buildings by the time the earthquake happens. And I think we really need another source of income, and a dock can provide both income and lore. Because you send explorers out into the world, and they do a little bit of quote-unquote exploring, which is the same as exploring not in quotation marks, except for the fact that it includes some plundering. <laughs> and we're actually about to population cap. We should build a house. I really like this thing where we only have, we, we only have to pay half the cost of a building. I'm going to go ahead and do this, too. Let's build a house in this tile. So we hit population cap. Okay, that's under control, not a big deal. Let's send a couple of people out to become sailors. So go forth and get lore and money. We're, we're at the population cap, but we're working on it. We're building a second house. So down here in the, in the readout, you can see each uh, area can only support a certain number of buildings. We have some food. Let's go ahead and colonize this, because like I said, I think we need a second source of wood. And we now have enough silver. I'm going to pull our miner back over here. We have enough silver to hire our war chief. And silver has other uses. But I really, I think we should focus on stone for the moment. So let's go down here and we'll grab some stone. Uh, and now the only thing we're waiting on for our war chief is money. We need 150 coins and we're almost there. Crowns, they're called. And honestly, I think things are going pretty well. This has been a pretty chill game. We haven't been brutally assaulted by any other players yet or anything. We are going... Yeah, we have enough wood. I think that the earthquake's not going to be a big problem. Oh. I'm going to have our citizens flee. Look at that war chief. Alright, get back on the tile now and... The AI is real bad about refocusing their uh, attackers. Once they get on something, they'll just keep fighting it until it's dead. Okay. Given the floor to acquire new knowledge. Let's take extra production. Hold on. I'll figure this out in a second. Let's resolve our problems one by one. So the first thing is, we gotta fix the burning buildings. I guess that mine was not very high priority. Fix this. Somebody go and repair that. That's pretty important. We're losing food at a terrible pace here. And... Uh, there's a citizen up here. Repair this tower before it burns down. Okay. Okay, things are under control, basically. So we'll keep our war chief here until the uh, until the tower's back at full strength, and then we'll go off hunting wolves. So this reduces the amount of food needed to expand into new areas. This gives you plus 10% production to non-upgraded buildings. This is probably quite good if you get it earlier, but we're at a place where we're going to start upgrading our buildings soon. And I kind of want this, because there's still a couple of tiles that I'd really like to pick up. See, red is expanding out. I want this tile pretty badly. It's going to be 140 food, even with that thing we just picked up. Right, so let's have the war chief come down here, handle these wolves. Uh, three wolves is no problem for a war chief. He's got this under control. And all of our resource incomes are looking pretty good. I think it is about time. You can see, these guys are tremendously more powerful than a warrior. 
Which is why you can only have one. Alright. And let's have him chill out right here. Because <clears throat> honestly, we're not likely to be attacked in very many places. So let's do it. Let's, uh, let's cover this up. How are we doing on stone here? So most resources are unlimited, right? We'll hunt deer forever. We'll, hunt, we'll gather fish forever and we'll never run them out. Stone and um, iron are limited. We're going to run the stone out of this tile pretty quickly. And when we do, this guy will run over here and become a silver miner again. Alright, so what do we want to do now? I need to upgrade buildings. So I'd like to upgrade my brewery because we're running short on happiness. It's going to take a little bit more wood. So we'll spend 100 wood on this in a second when we get to 100. And then the next thing we're going to spend wood on is building another woodcutter. And this is 140 food? Yeah. Alright, so now that that's upgraded, not only do they produce 50% more happiness, but we can assign one more person there. Alright, this guy ran all the stone out of this territory, so we'll burn this building down. And that gives us an extra building slot to work with here, right? And also gives us back a little bit of the stone and money that we put into it. Colonize this. Colonizing new areas also gives you a little bit of bonus uh, happiness. So this will help with that too. And we want to make a woodcutter's lodge here. We're starting to get a little stretched on food. We just have too many citizens doing too many different things. So the next, the next buildings we need to focus on upgrading are these uh, special food production buildings. We need to get more people out here. Uh, that's also what we're going to do with our iron. So in a, once we have five iron, we can improve tools. We can pick one of our types of civilians and uh, pay some iron into them, basically, and make them more effective at gathering. Whatever it is that they gather. So we'll improve tools for hunters. That'll help us with our food problem a little bit. Somebody's idle. Oh, right. Okay, so a little bit more wood income. I'd like to pull some people over here to work on this. Actually, uh, I'm gonna move... There's no reason for two woodcutters to be working on the tile with the low output. Let's move you over to here. And then I'm actually gonna pull the other woodcutter... No, you know what, I'm not. I was gonna say pull them to become a lore master to increase our rate of lore gain. But actually, I think I'm gonna leave them where they are because we should stockpile wood for the winter a little bit. Our lores are coming pretty quickly here. So each active Mender's Hut gives plus 5% production in that territory or get people 30% faster. Our Mender's Hut is in the place with the fish. Yeah, you know, I'll take that, I'll take that. And now we have enough knowledges that we get to we get a new uh, we get a blessing. So you get the you get the first one at six and the second one at nine and then twelve I think. So we could get less loss of food production during winter or plus three happiness or a whole bunch of stone and iron. I actually think a whole bunch of stone and iron is pretty good for us right now. So let's upgrade our huts here. We're under attack. Oh, that's right, there's wolves in this hex. There's wolves in this tile. Let's send our war chief out to clear the tile out. Because I don't want to have to deal with wolves during the winter. I totally forgot that this was a place where there were hostels. Okay, that won't be a problem again. Now we can improve tools for our hunters. So hunters gather 15% more food. And then uh, once we have enough resources again, We'll upgrade this Hunter's Lodge. So we, have, we now have five improved Hunters while we up to six. That'll make things a lot easier for us during the winter. And actually, I think we can probably even... Pull somebody off of food here to work wood. Boy. You know, I'm going to grab all of our villagers and bring them over to the Mender's Hut. Because there's a house here, so the villagers can gather food normally on this tile. And I think it'll be uh, it'll be good to have them where the bonus is. Oh, I did select one, not select all. So we're gonna see a uh, we're gonna see a pretty big drop in food while everybody's running instead of gathering. But we'll be all right. I might need to actually 
Let's cut raids for the moment. Are right, you guys good? Everybody gathering? Okay, that got us one extra. I think we were at minus nine before everybody moved over. It's a little bit better. Um, yeah, we'll cut. I, I cut the raiding. We have to wait for the long ship to get back, but we'll have the sailors go back to being villagers for the rest of the winter. And that should, I think, take care of it. We should be pretty solid. So let's talk about victory conditions. Here's how you win the game. Uh, either somebody has to... The, the world, the map special is here. Uh, you can also win the game by getting all of the blessings, which first requires you to have um, 15 technologies, I believe. Or by accumulating enough fame. We obviously are not doing a super great job on the fame front. The only other player we know is ahead of us on fame. Uh, or by accumulating enough money and stuff like this. Or by just murdering all the other clans. This is not my favorite thing in the world. What's up? Oh, you guys, yeah. So sailors become villagers as soon as you take them out of the dock. Okay, we're minus three for, like, two months. I think winter ends in March. I think we'll be okay, actually. We'll just sit here for a moment and kind of, uh, kind of suffer through our bad incomes. So we have a moment here to just kind of sit and enjoy, like, I think the art in this game is really cool. And I really like the, uh, the sense of exploration. I like the having to scout out new areas thing. I think that's really cool. There's a lot of great ideas here. The game is still in early access. Um, I think they, they said they planned to release in early 2018, like February or March, they said. Um, and they'll be adding a dedicated single-player campaign shortly before proper release. And I'm honestly, I'm, like, really looking forward to it. I think this game is super cool. It has functional multiplayer right now. I'm not really, I'm not huge on competitive multiplayer, but uh, if that is your thing, that is available already. Winter's about to end, come on. I really want to get my villagers back to doing fun stuff. Okay. So, first of all, two people back out on the water. Next thing is I really want to focus on my lore production, so let's grab two more people and throw them over here. And now notice, this says lore masters produce 10% more lore in this area, not just the ones on the circle of stones. So if we built a carved stone here, allowing us to put another lore master in, uh, which I'm totally going to do, that lore master also produces additional lore. And we're going to uh, focus up on our lore a little bit. What's up? Oh, the Silver mine ran out. Let's burn down your mine and convert you back to a villager until I have a better idea. So reduces extra firewood consumption by 50% or... I'm going to increase our population growth speed. And I did that right as I hit the population cap because I'm not paying enough attention. <laughs> That's fine. We'll, we'll build another house. Right, we're short a little bit of money... They're going to take this over. I'm actually totally fine with that, I think, but if we're going to have a player in that space, I'm going to build another defensive tower. Just always nervous about other players. You know what else I'm going to build? I'm going to build a trading post. I guess we can put it right here. It's probably to our benefit to have more villagers in the places that are adjacent to the border so that, you know, if we get attackers, they run in and immediately start defending. And actually, we are going to run out of stone at some point. So I'm going to grab a, uh, I'm going to grab a woodcutter, turn them into a villager, and then have them come over here and build this. Who doesn't have a job? Oh, this guy. Your job is that. Become a lore master. Alright, so we're pulling in 22 lore per turn, and we now have enough active lore masters to, uh... Actually, menders count in this total, so we were, we were fine before, it turns out. Now, we could win the game by taking over Big Justin. We'd have to put 2,000 food into it, and we'd also have to kill off the Valkyrie guarding it. Uh, totally feasible, actually. You can see these guys thinking the same thing I am. We might... we might... 
be able to do this, actually. Okay, so construction of the quarry is complete. Start start doing that thing. Uh, you, I guess, just I don't know, run back over here. Gather food. Uh, we have the, the resources to do an improved tools, but I think I actually want to save my money to improve this Hunter's Lodge first. We'll assign a person to this trading post we just built. And then we'll also make a trade route with red. So we'll trade red some of our wood. We have more wood than we need. Oh, the boar clan can't trade with other... Yep, that sure says trading post with neutral factions. Okay. Well, we haven't met a neutral faction. We don't know for sure that there aren't any on the board, but... That means this is a bad building. Actually, you know what? I'm going to demolish it. Because if we can't build trading uh, posts, while I do want a gold building, it should be a marketplace. There are two different gold, uh, two different money-producing buildings. One of them enables trading. The other one uh, enables you to spend money on resources. Um, I think we could pick up extra money. We have a lot of clan members. It's just a lot of free income. But I think actually what I'm going to do is uh, get some attack power. I'm a little concerned about the enemies surrounding us from all sides slowly. We're going to have a blizzard this year. Blizzards suck. So yeah, we want to store up a large amount of food and wood. Uh, we really, really need this upgrade. Well, it's coming. We'll get there. So you can see here, this will allow us to spend money to buy resources, and the resources in the marketplace will build up over time. So let's upgrade that. Alright, so now we have six upgraded hunters, or at least we will in a moment. That's a lot of food production that is winterproof. The next building we upgrade might be the Fisherman's Hut. Extra 20% fish, and can train one more fisherman. We might do uh, we might do another set of upgrades, uh, such that we have a bonus, an upgrade, an increased number of upgraded fishermen. How far are we from? We're still super far from this. We're at four, five. Okay. Remember, one of these lures, our free lore, uh, that we got from Fame, doesn't count toward our victory or unlocking new blessings. So at our next at our next lore, we'll get another blessing. We can take this one probably. Or actually we're hitting our we're hitting our happiness cap. We should take Baldur's blessing. And I'm just gonna sit here and stockpile stuff. I guess there's a cap on how much food you can have. Let's feast. We spend a bunch of food but we become more effective at generating food. If we could build a silo. Silo improves food produced in an area and also increases the amount of food we can store in total. Um, let us bank a little bit more. It actually would be cool to put it where the Mender's Hut is, huh? So buildings have a limited number, or areas have a limited number of buildings you can put up in them. You can spend a bunch of money on an area to develop it, and it will increase that cap by one, and you can only do that once in each area. It might actually be worth doing and develop here to put a silo down in this area. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, increase civilians attack. Uh, this is a ve I'm very focused on defense this game. I'm not interested in trying to kill other players. Then we'll grab some extra happiness here. And remember, we have plus two happiness from the feast that will wear off. In fact, it just wore off. But you know what? Things are going so well, I'm going to organize another feast. So we could be attacking the other players. Maybe that would be wise. I don't know. Oh. Right, I'm going to bail everybody off of the tile. Let the AI uh, focus in on the tower. And then we'll come back. And... I'm not too worried about their Warchief. I want to remove all of the other guys. The Warchief's doing the most damage. But it will take a long time to kill him. 
we'll, we do a much better job of reducing the damage they're dealing by killing their other warriors. And remember, each each death here, aside from the war chief, is something that they're going to have to actually regrow via their town hall. I mean, the war chief's not exactly a cheap thing to replace either. Please go fix that. So let's upgrade this. We'll take a tool upgrade for fishermen. We'll assign a new fisherman. All right, we already we have two menders full time, so we're already working on healing people up. But like that was a very costly loss for them. They lost what four. Uh, four people plus their war chief. The loss of our war chief really does suck, though. I'm pleased to see that the AI is doing a better job of refiguring their targets and stuff, though. That's nice. I wonder if we should build another Mender's Hut over here. What was the text of that? Active Menders. Oh, it's each active Mender gives plus 5% production. So this is actually 10%. So you can see our um, incomes are harsh. We're, we're in a harsh place. Okay, we could put another person on wood. I think we should. I think we probably ought to pull these guys for the uh, for the winter. It's going to be a harsh one. We're going to need them. So you guys get in here. One of you needs to become a woodcutter. Unfortunately, we don't really have much money. If we had more money, we could uh, we could use our marketplace to figure stuff out, uh, resource-wise. All right, menders are working hard. So I built up a pretty large stockpile. I think we should be able to survive a blizzard, but we're gonna lose a lot of resources here. Having a lot of having nine people doing winter-resistant food gathering is really cool, though. That's a luxury you don't often have. So I was thinking about trying to expand out to here, not because this territory is valuable, but because it has sheep. We can take the sheep, and uh, if you put a sheep in a territory, it reduces that territory's need for firewood. So the blizzard's pretty harsh. Yeah, geez, thirty-five. You can hear combat somewhere. Oh, they're having a Draugr problem over here. Oh, because they, yeah, they took over this tile adjacent to these Draugr and then they haven't been able to kill them. Draugr are considerably more difficult to fight than wolves. I'm starting to get a little worried that we may not actually have the resources necessary to last out this winter. If we run out of food, people start starving. If we run out of wood, people start freezing. And yeah, I definitely don't have what we need to survive. I could pull people off of food, but maybe... You know, with us having two active menders, maybe uh, we could pull lore masters, but we're actually cruising toward this victory pretty quickly. I think I'm just going to endure. So you can see, we're going to start freezing. The blizzard doesn't last all the way to the end of the winter, but it lasts pretty close. Yeah, we're going to start freezing and we're going to start starving. And this is both uh, this is both injuring our people and it's reducing our production. But I don't have the micro necessary to dynamically refigure everybody in helpful ways. Um, let's take reduce firewood consumption during winter. That's a thing that we'll need later. Um, it's not going to help too much here. It'll help as soon as the blizzard ends. Once we go back to just normal winter, which we will do a little bit, I will be all right. Okay. Okay, the blizzard's over. And it's about to not be winter anymore. Alright, so let's pull... Oh no, we're fine. It's not winter anymore. So you can see our happiness is real low because of starvation and stuff, but it'll... It'll correct here. And yet we need to build houses. Okay, so I need... Two people to get back out on the ocean because we need money. Not being able to pay the income for your buildings causes them to catch on fire. How much is it going to be to repair? 15? Okay. 
Our incomes are good enough that we, like, we're gonna pull out of this pretty quickly. And let's build a house just as soon as we have the money. I'm actually gonna need to assign some people to work the marketplace. We need more money. We still need more money, honestly. I'm gonna build another dock. We probably can build another dock. Ah. More stuff caught on fire during that very brief period where we weren't, uh, weren't paying the upkeeps. I'm kind of surprised that we didn't get... We don't have notifications that stuff is on fire. Let's make a house here, I guess. Just somewhere where we can. Okay. We have a building slot available. So we'll make a dock. Oh right, I forgot, we have a runestone over here that's just completely unmanned. Go fix that. Not working on the house. And money is really our prime concern right now. I'm not even really that interested in food. I mean, I guess... This is certainly a way we could win. 2,000 food is pretty considerable. Um, do we have anything left that can produce more food? I could do this, but we're not actually producing food out of any non-upgraded buildings right now. Oh, we should take this. We should improve the tools of our lore masters, I guess? Let's get... Get out there and get more lore and uh, and money. I think we're doing pretty well here. Once we have money, remember, money can function as food, since we have a marketplace running. Yeah, we can buy a lot of stuff. Upgrading the marketplace doesn't cost any money. Upgrade this, we'll, uh, we'll stop it. We need a little bit more wood to also upgrade this. So when it comes back, we can load an extra person onto the boat. It'll be one of our wood cutters. So we're actually producing more wood than we probably need to be at this point. We'll have to refigure all this when winter comes, probably. But for now, this person really ought to be a sailor. So what if we just went super hard into food production? What would be the way to do that? Two thousand food is an awful lot. One thing I would want to do is invest in this area and then build a uh, silo here. We have enough money coming in that developing areas is starting to look pretty feasible. A Mender's Hut in this area also would be good. Uh, I'm more worried about defense than offense. I think this is an okay way to go here. Oh, and our blessings just improved. So Balder uh, becomes plus five happiness where it was plus three, so that's nice. We got another two happiness out of it. Blizzard penalty is hugely reduced. Wow, that's pretty cool if we had gotten it, you know, earlier. <laughs> Oh, the stone mine ran out. Come a villager. So let's build a mender's hut over here. That'll let me produce some extra food, but do I... I'm kind of torn, right? Am I going for a food victory or am I going for a lore victory? I guess let's go for the lore victory. I kind of wanted to do this just because it's something a little different, because like I said, I think I got... Uh, lore victories in my other two North Guard videos, but these guys are really well suited to it. We'll do another video maybe where I uh, I pursue a different victory type. Portals to Hellheim have opened, so in all of these places we're going to see a bunch of Draugr spawn. Uh, this one has a defensive tower already. That's not a big deal. Actually, so does the yeah. Okay, we're fine. Sometimes those generate in really annoying places. We should probably get a war chief though, and then we'll just put a war chief over here too. We should have a war chief, yeah, because of this kind of crap.
You can never trust the other players to just behave like civilly, you know? Yeah, so we need a war chief up anyway, we may as well have that. Okay, let's. Yeah, let's focus on lore. So we have enough. No, we don't have enough stone anymore. I just built stuff with uh, another stone I must have. So. We don't have any stone deposits either. We can buy stone via the marketplace, but it's not cheap. It's, uh, yeah, 40 silver per. Or 40 crowns per. Okay, these guys are ready for their third sailor. I mean, we have a pretty solid rate of lore income here. One more blessing, or one more knowledge will get us Freya's blessing, and then we're actually not that far off. Somebody just got to their second blessing. Yeah, it's a shame that we can't trade with other players, because trading with other players is a good way to get um, some free points of relations with them. Let's improve our lore masters a little bit. All right, that was worth an extra, extra two lore. Okay, so here's the Draugr. I think, yeah, you'll be fine. It's not really a problem if they all spawn in places where you have defensive buildings. <laughs> These guys are having Draugr problems, uh, Draugr spawning out of this area and coming after them at the same time that they're getting the spawns. Yeah, Red's actually in a really bad place. I don't know why they thought that attacking us would be a good idea. They're not secure. Right, so the, mentor, the Menders are doing their thing. We'll go back to full lore production when they're finished. Is there another place that we see that has lore, uh, root stones? No, there is not. To a certain extent, I think we're kind of just sitting here waiting. Oh, the Altar of Kings. Okay. There's a building called the Altar of Kings. It's quite expensive, but it produces stuff. We should definitely build this. This is something that will give us some extra lore. So what are we short? We're short stone and money. And unfortunately, the only way for us to get stone is to spend money. Well, I guess that's how that is. So... I guess we're just waiting. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this territory. It's not in danger, it's not adjacent to any enemies. Oh, there's stone over here. And this'll give us some sheep. We'll just run the sheep over to places where there are a lot of buildings. Places where a lot of citizens are working. Right, yellows come back for more because he feels like he hasn't lost enough guys this game. This is especially bad for him because he's going to uh, obviously uh, do less damage during the winter. I'm not even going to bring my citizens... Actually, we can bring them back in if we just bring them in over here. Yeah, yellow is just throwing guys away. This is actually like pretty bad for him. He's gonna get away with his war chief, but he just lost, what was that, four more guys? Three more guys? Also, we need somebody, unfortunately, to replace the, the hunter. So he inflicted some damage on me, but him inflicting damage on me doesn't actually help him. Except, you know, if he's aware that we're going to win. Obviously, it would be bad for him if we won. I'm going to go ahead and improve our... What am I going to improve? Probably our sailors. I'm a little bit less worried about money now that I don't think I'm going to have to buy the stone. I will just... We'll expand over to here. We're going to be running at a slight deficit all winter, and I'm just going to be fine with that. We should build a house. We're in a population cap relatively soon. But yeah, we'll be okay. So she produced firewood in their region. You also can slaughter them to gain immediate boosts of food, which 
Oh. Sea raids. I kind of forgot about this. I forgot this is a thing. Yeah, we should build towers in coastal regions. Run! Get our war chief coming. Alright, now we'll grab all of our people. Just really gang up on them. Yeah, the Raven Clan can raid your coast. Let's try to move people back to where they go. Um, so it's a good idea to have, if there's a Raven Clan player on the map, it's a good idea to have some defensive towers in coastal zones. I think we'll be okay. This is a little tricky, though. Now we... Effectively, we have a lot of border territory and only one war chief. We are at a significant food deficit while we're building, because these guys are building instead of gathering, and also people who are wounded have reduced production. So our menders need to get on this. It might be worth building another menders hut just to have faster recovery. And also, I mean, it's not like menders are bad, right? For our, uh... For our deal. So we'll assign a couple new menders. We'll uh, expand outwards slowly. Uh, oh, Red is attacking us over here. He did not bring enough people. I mean, this is a kind of a bad decision, I think. He's got a warrior and a war chief. He at least managed to get out without losing anything, but I don't really understand the value of that attack. We can see he's just going to run over here and try it down here now. No, okay, that guy's just running around for no reason. Can somebody please repair this. Oh, we'll sign some additional menders. So first of all, we get stuff rebuilt a little more quickly. Secondly, it gives us some bonus food production. And third, it gives us extra lore once everybody's healed up. Uh, yeah, you know, we're having happiness problems right now. So the war chief providing extra happiness seems... Looks like a good move. Uh, unhappy citizens. When you're at zero happiness, you stop growing. If your happiness keeps going down, because you keep having more people around or bad stuff happens, like diseases and stuff, uh, citizens that become unhappy actually produce fewer resources. So, something to be concerned about. You know what? Let's just buy the stone. Actually, we accumulated such a huge amount of money that we can just buy the stone and then put this down in a second. It's going to turn out to actually be pretty slow to uh, to generate food to get out of here. I would like to get this tile because the fertile land that lets us build a farm is, is neat. Farms produce a lot of food. Uh, farms produce a lot of food, but they only produce it during the summer. During the winter, a farmer food income goes down to be the same as a normal villager, I believe. We're saving resources. And yeah, it is 15 knowledge. So actually, we're only 2 knowledge off, and we're doing pretty well here. I think we're going to be okay. I think that we're going to start seeing some more focus from the enemies. It definitely seems like they're attacking us more. But they also seem kind of seem to have their own stuff going on. They seem busy. So let's have somebody come over here and build this. Everybody work together. Because of the way that, you know, citizens are your army and stuff, uh, it can be really, really bad to lose citizens in attacks. It's not a good idea to do this half-assed, like, run in and fail thing. Really, you have to get value out of your attacks. Are we actually at a food deficit right now? Well, it'll be fixed as soon as we have this uh, this next citizen. But I guess we can we can run some people off of. I'm just gonna buy some food. That'll keep us from starving. And then as soon as the next citizen is birthed in, we'll uh, we'll be positive again. 
Also, once this is built. But I'm wondering if we should maybe go up to having a standing army. Just a little bit concerned. Uh, let's build an axe thrower camp. Axe throwers are more powerful uh, offensive units. Oh, I was not even paying attention to the rat event. Five people got sick. That's harsh. Oh, that guy finished his build. And again with this, uh, this really, like, half-assed attack. I threaten this population. Run. Huh. I tried to click on that guy and run him away, but he didn't select for some reason. Well, whatever. Yeah, the, uh, the attacks are going to get more frequent. They know that we are winning, and this is why I want to have a standing army. I don't know if this is the best strategy, but... It seems to be working, right? Yeah, but now we're getting it from multiple players at the same time. But Red's afraid to bring his war chief in because the guy's too injured. Just bringing, <laughs> bringing this whole train of villagers from the other uh, tile over. Okay. Let's get back to work. I kind of wonder if I want to... It might be worth it to just run in here and try to assassinate their guy, their war chief with my war chief, even though they have a tower here. Because there's a pretty long timer on summoning a new war chief. We really need the sickness and the wounds to get taken care of. But now that we have... Uh, what did we lose? We lost a mender in this territory. Now that we have a little bit of stability and we have pretty good food income and a lot of money, I'm wondering if I should just have a standing group of, like, axe throwers. Let's do that. I'm going to grab a couple of normal villagers. We'll just have some standing axe throwers. And we'll take... Now that we're going to have a standing military, improving their weapons seems a little bit better. Ah, we still, <laughs> we still have so many wounded. Our villagers have done a good job of, uh, of handling things. Actually, if we upgrade this building... Uh, not only will we be able to run more and better axe throwers, but because of feeling safe, we'll get an additional happiness. So this might be our next uh, our next focus. Oh, except stone. It's nice to have a marketplace, man. So what do we need? 50 gold? Or 50 money? Okay. We need 200 to buy more stone. Yeah, we'll get there. Our cash income is pretty solid. And actually, all we have to do is survive until our next uh, our next tech. It's a little anticlimactic, but it's a lot less tedious than winning a military victory. I think my largest problem with the military victory is, just, is that it just... Uh, it does get a little tedious. You're running around trying to uh, fight everybody's citizens, and then you have to get to their home territory and take it over. We actually only need three stone, so... Oh. Okay, that sound, they got incoming. Yeah, we're gonna lose that guy. Okay, now the cavalry's here, come back and help fight. So we're getting hammered by <laughs> Kilo and Red pretty much constantly. But I think we're not we're not exactly impregnable. If one of them wanted to really run a dedicated attack, they could probably do a lot of damage.
But they both seem content to run these like little like let's let's run three or four guys in at a time and then lose everything type attacks. I know the AI can do real attacks, I've seen it. But you can see these guys are massing up actual soldiers, although it looks like they're having people die to Draugr as well. Actually, the fact that Red has so many Draugr to contend with may be part of the reason that they haven't mounted a better attack. Your game is just much, much more difficult if you have to fight Draugr all the time. We got a little bit lucky on that one. Alright, so we're losing wood, but we're not losing wood fast enough to run out before the end of the winter. In fact, we should be fine through the earthquake, too. And we're generating 41 lore, so we'll be, uh, we'll be winning the game any moment now. So this is Northgard. I hope that if you've never seen this game before, this is uh, interesting to you. I think it is really solid. It's quite a bit of fun. I've been uh, I've been playing it off and on all throughout Early Access, um, ever since I made that first video about it. Oh, no, I ran the wrong way. And actually, I'm just going to grab two people right now and make them axe throwers. Okay. We're going to lose some people, but Red's going to lose a lot more. Okay, good. We killed all of the people that he brought with him. Uh, and then I need... A villager to come and repair this. So it's true we never did develop fur coats. Probably would have been a good idea to do that at some point. And yeah, he's still having to deal with Draugr. They just haven't... They've kept expanding out slowly. Take over an area that is full of Draugr. But then also is next to an area full of Draugr. Has really not worked out for them. I'm a little bummed. Um, since the last time I did a video, they've added a whole bunch of new tile types, and there's a new neutral clan that you can encounter. There's all kinds of like cool stuff. Oh wow, they're getting like proper invaded here. This is what happens sometimes. This must be a, a drug or tomb, a tile that generates them. This is what happens if you let a tomb or like a wolf cave fester for too long. It builds up a critical population, and then they rush you. He's actually going to lose this territory. And a big part of that is because he just ran out of soldiers by getting us by getting uh, getting into fights with us. Yeah, one one military unit I don't think is going to win this fight. What is this? So you can see this is what happens if there are enemies in a territory but none of your soldiers, it slowly decolonizes and then eventually uh, you lose control of it. Okay, he's He's got it under control, but he's having to <clears throat> he's having to put so many resources and so much attention into fighting zombies in his backfield that he really can't pay attention to us. Bam. All right, yeah, that's uh, that's Northgard. Then we get a little a little replay that shows us what the other players were up to and all of the events and stuff. Uh, I think this game is super cool, and the, if you want to play it in multiplayer against people, all that stuff is live right now. The single player campaign is on its way. I think they're having a little sale right now to celebrate the release of the new clan. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be it for us for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, like I said, uh, look into the game. It's it's pretty cool, and I think it would be cool to support these guys because they're, they're doing something neat. Uh, come back next time. I might do a couple more Northgard videos, actually, just to show off uh, more different stuff. Because I feel like the three games I put up have all gone sort of similarly. Uh, and that's not really my experience of the game. So come back next time for some kind of new thing, maybe more of this. And we'll see you then.